This video is a story about who I am, what I've gone through, where I'm at. But I've been on a very long journey. I'm a 52 year old person and I'm in a, I'm in a tough spot. So the first thing I want to do is explain this stage, this setup, because you can look at this and immediately get the sense of, okay, this, this, this person has lost his mind. <laughs> He's completely out of his mind. This shit's crazy. And what's up? But I could also take everything that's going on here and symbolize it. I can take these two giraffes. These are remnants of my mom, but this represents family. This cute thing here. I want a video. <laughs> this is me crying. I want an ugly cry on the internet and just be like, eh. right, but I mean, this is representative of childhood, innocence, the load bearing pole in the middle of my room, which represents the cold, hard truth. This pole has done its job, continues to do its job right now. The shovel, that's what that is in the background, is a shovel, snow shovel, the laundry basket, all representative of the kinds of mundane tasks that we all need to do in life at times. This, this represents work. The yoga mat that I'm standing on represents physical and mental health. I'm kind of standing in different places. I know the lighting isn't great. I have one old professional spotlight. <laughs> it might look like a flashlight effect on my face the entire time, but this is the best lighting I can get right now. So that explains the stage, basically. Things here are symbolic of what the world is like now, because the world to me is, is rather messed up, and we, we need to do something about it. I've been on this planet for 52 years, so I'm tuned in to the basic process of having problems, having to go through the challenge of, of solving those problems, and then having the process continue as a cycle. And you do it for a long time after decades, and you start becoming familiar with the pattern, and you develop your character fundamentally with that pattern. Then there's what I'm wearing, which looks like I'm just you know wearing sweats, <laughs> with a colorful, psychedelic uh, undershirt. But this is a uniform for me. I'm gonna tear up again, fuck. This is a uniform for me. I have three of them. I rotate them, different colors. This is my personal caregiver uniform. At the end of January this year, my mom died from dementia. She actually died because she accidentally fell and fractured her hip, which as I learned at that moment is an immediate death sentence. It takes days because the body's trying to heal it, can't heal it. There's no way to go through the surgery and all that stuff because you're so frail with dementia on top of it all. So when she fell like that, that was it. It was hard. My mom was a pleasant person. She handled dementia brilliantly, as brilliantly as you could. And I'm proud. I'm proud of her. I'm thankful to the universe or, or all the support that we've received. And, and I'm happy about that accomplishment. I worked my ass off for that. But I wore this outfit. I had to single-handedly take care of my mom with dementia for the last 12 years on a budget that's too low, no home care no family, no friends, nobody in our vicinity to help me. I watched my mom's brain decay for 12 years. My mother, who I have a healthy mom-son connection with. I had to help change her every single day. I had to help her eat every single day. There's so much to say about that. And I would love to do a video, especially because there are millions of people out there right now People I know who are dealing with the same situation. But I, I, I went out on a limb to take care of my mom with dementia and I knew I was doing the right thing and I still know that I'm doing the right thing. But here is my situation. I'm out on a limb and the branch is about to break and I'm about to fall. And if that's how I die, if we're all gonna die at some point, I know it makes me unpopular to say that, but we are all gonna meet deadly failure. And if this is how I go down, this is how I go down but I wanted to at least set the record straight. I want people out there, because I know most of the people watching this are my friends. The people, my family, people who care about me, and I care about them. My situation is simply this. I'm an artist, an artist really, the odds of being successful as a professional artist are, as all of us know, are terribly low. And I had to scrape by. I want to be an ethically professional artist not just a professional artist, an ethical professional artist. 
So that makes my life even harder. I never fell in love and I didn't force a round peg into a square hole. So I never build a family and that's really hard. There are people out there who go through this and I wanna make more videos on this because I know people have to navigate this. My, my Most of my friends, they do have families. They certainly have significant others or some of the kids. Basically my wife, child, children, grandchild, grandchildren, they all died and I never even got a chance to meet them. And yes, it is that horrible. It's a brutal, brutal way to go. But life always has a major burden to it. We all understand this. There's no why me to it at all. But taking that, combining it with no career success, having to live check to check, not being able to put 10% of my income into uh, some kind of of investment account. I put my ethical best, because I'm driven by a healthy conscience, for 30 years. No major positive breakthrough at all. No family to build. And then, of course, the last 12 years, I had to single-handedly take care of my mom with dementia. I'm beat up. My, you may not see it here. I try to keep in good shape as much as I can. I need to move on. My mom passed away. I need to transition. But psychologically up here, it's bad. It's not so bad that I don't understand what I need to do, which is to get up and, and to keep going. And I am doing that. There are three possible outcomes. I need to make money. I don't have a family to rely upon. I don't have a trust fund. I don't have an, a house to inherit. My parents did the best that they could. They did an admirable job. And just there are a lot of us in this world who just don't have the ability to save up for retirement. We don't have it. And in this day and age, that's very, very hard on a lot of people. I wanna make videos about it. But here, here is my, my job situation. I either succeed as an ethical, professional artist doing what I'm clearly cut out to do. That's, that's one, one possible outcome. That somehow I've got roughly maybe through July and that's it that I'm done. My credit cards are maxed out, my money is, is gone dry, and I'm done. I mean, sincerely, I will be broke, I will be homeless. So in this situation, after everything I've been through, I'm looking at the situation responsibly and trying to figure out what do I do? What's the right step? It makes sense. I mean, and anybody out there will tell you that you just gotta go get a job, get any job, doesn't matter. Well, I've got a resume, but it's got a 12 year crater in it. And it's in the world of web design development and 12 years of a crater in that field is disastrous. There's simply no way that I can get caught up in a couple of months with everything that has happened in web design development <laughs> over the past 12 years. That's not happening. I, I tried, I looked at it. I went to uh, chat GPT and I, I just said, you know, tell me, tell me what the what the major developments were. And it gives me this long list and I look at that list, I go, that, that's just not feasible. That cannot be, that's not the path. And that's the only path where I could possibly make good money, like reasonably good money. I found a YouTube channel called A Life After Layoff. Shout out, uh, this is a man who does job recruiting for corporations and has done it for decades and now he's an educator. And so I was learning about resumes, trying to figure out how I could take my disaster of a resume and turn it into something that would work. And one of the videos that really struck me was he did a video on AI. And long story short, while there are already thousands of people losing their jobs to AI right now, reportedly, his conclusion in that video is that if you do anything with a computer, your job is likely targeted at this point for, for being replaced. And we don't know when. We don't know we don't know if really, because we don't know maybe maybe the advancement of AI does run to a serious roadblock. We don't know. But based upon its current performance, its current position, its current trajectory, it's a dead end road in technology. There's ageism. And for a very good reason. Most of technology is ultra hardcore work, extra long hours, high degree of cerebral activity. I mean, it's really hard. I did it. I was making 45 bucks an hour before taking care of my mom as a subcontractor for a small web development outfit. A bunch of good people who enjoyed working for them. And then my brain broke from it. I, I was broken because I'm not cut out to do that. And that leaves me with only one other path in terms of professionalism. And that's go find an entry level job. Just working at a supermarket, being a greeter at Apple store, whatever, any of these kinds of jobs. And I don't put down anybody doing those jobs at all. But those jobs are a lot of work and they make little money in this economy in this world. People who work those jobs understand exactly what I'm saying. I need to be able to pay my bills. I need to pay down my credit card debt. I, I have a car that's 22 years old and it, it needs to be replaced. 
I pull out of the driveway, I have to turn the car off generally and turn it back on again to get it to work right. The car is, is old. It's, the, it's one of the ugliest cars on the road. I get like a Toyota Camry or something, ideally. Something that has like longevity to it. That's what my responsible brain dictates. But I can't buy a new car with a job like that. And I can't help my family. I have family still. I got my dad who, who I want to be able to help. I haven't been able to help him at all really because of my circumstance, which really at this point is a money problem, a serious, dire money problem that I obviously need to resolve or fail trying. And so the problem with the jobs of like supermarket and all this kind of thing is one, I'm competing with younger people who are also vying for those same positions. So I'd have to spend all this time going out there trying to see if I can even get a job like that in time, which is no guarantee. And then I need to hold that job. And I've already explained to you the psychological barrage that I've had to endure to get to this point. I'm trying to heal physically and mentally to be able to adapt as well as I can because I understand the supreme discipline of adaptation, right? I need to adapt. That's all there is to it. And so looking at all that stuff as carefully as I could, knowing I have a very limited time frame, I came to one conclusion that I believe is responsible, that I believe is the right choice. And I, I refer to an old movie called The Karate Kid. You might know it. Uh, there's a Netflix series called Cobra Kai that is based upon these movies. And the original movie, The Karate Kid, the old wise Miyagi looks to the young learning student and he says you either karate do or you karate do not if you karate so so you get squashed just like great and for me the solution is clear i either ethically professional artist do or i do not it is an enormous amount of work to do these videos i have to do all the audio the visuals the editing i do all of it but the thing is is that this this is not just about me what's so troublesome is while i look at my situation as dire as it is then i look at the world i look at global society that i built this stage to represent visually to symbolize it and i realize the world is going through these kind of dire situations i don't know I, a secondhand information is secondhand information to me i only i only am passionate about firsthand information when I'm being smart about it. But what I'm hearing is we've got a real serious problem environmentally. We have a real serious problem economically. We've got a real serious problem in terms of health. We've got a real serious problem in terms of avoiding nuclear war. We have a real serious problem involving technology. One of the things that I did throughout my adulthood, given my circumstance, I had some time to examine, to explore the fundamental rationale of reality itself. And I found something. I found something extremely powerful. And I mean genuinely, extremely powerful. And the next video that I'm gonna do is probably going to be the biggest video I've ever done. And it may be the biggest video to ever be made. And I don't say that to be boastful because I found it. I found the leverage that society needs to shut down the selfish application of might makes right and its competition that is crescendoed into this madness where health is not the priority of our species because control is the priority of our species. And that's disastrous. We need to prioritize health. Obviously, the healthier we are as a species, the healthier we are as people within the species, the better the decisions we make for our children, for our grandchildren. I have friends, they have families, and I think about them all the time. I think about them because I know what it does. It grounds me to look at this world with all the hardship and all the things that are going on and to try to be smart, to try to be responsible. It's such a challenge and you all know that. Whatever I am from worst through best, including the equally valid indifference, this is who I am. This is authentic. There is a new definition of dominance and it's only existed in religion and in philosophy. And that's not good enough because the people who we need to convince just simply brush off philosophy and religion. They're, they're, they're doing it right now. So what we need is irrefutable demonstration of a new definition of dominance and I want to share it with you and that next video is all about control and in that video I'm literally going to take away all your control all control I'm gonna take it away from you I've got three simple purely sensible experiential truths 
I am going to demonstrate that there is a new definition of dominance that completely changes how humanity functions as a species. You can see the social uh, reach of this channel. This is a crowdfunding effort. Instead of doing an actual formal crowdfunding, which is just me by myself having to manage this and then manage that, we do one thing. Keep it simple. One YouTube channel. And I stream on Twitch Live, Spirit Wave 7. That's not just for me, not to say my sorry, <laughs> but to actually save society, the spirit wave, the wave that we all serve, and we party surf that way, right? We have fun. You gotta have fun in life. life. Life includes fun. It's very serious in what we're doing, but it's also very fun in what we're doing because we need that balance. But as you can see, this isn't good enough. We got over 400 subscribers and we got a few more coming in. Thank you. Welcome on in. But we need, we need a social reach. And what my problem is and has been really for my life is that's a whole commitment. That's a whole nother job. I have to go to these communities, be a member of those communities, contribute to those communities, connect with people there healthily, and then use my expression capability to contribute to those communities. That's a lot of work. And then you grow, you grow your social reach. If you wanna get involved in this community here, leave comments, like videos, which gets the algorithm to, re to recommend this, these videos to other people. At the very least, that expands the reach, it expands the number of people who are hearing this message. We need, we need the right definition of dominance. I mean, dominance is what guides everything, it drives everything. And if we don't have that right, we've got nothing right. We can get dominance right, right now. And it's not that hard, it really is. I had one instance in my life where I had a healthy social expression. We're a social species and we are conditioned, I mean, dramatically conditioned to really kind of ignore that in favor of this always look out for number one mentality and this, this aggressive competition of me beats you. Of all places to experience humanity's natural expression of healthy socialness, my first mosh pit experience. I was standing literally within 10 feet of Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails fame before the fame. But I stumbled and I could see I'm looking down at the ground and the ground's getting closer to me and I'm stumbling down. I'm going, oh crap. I just knew it. I'm going to hit the floor. I'm going to get trampled on. But as I'm going down and as I'm looking down, I see a circle of arms that just swoop right in. They prop me back up on my feet. The arms retract and everyone starts throwing their bodies at each other again. There's no sign at the door saying to do that. There's no law that says to do that. These people don't know me. What they did was an all natural, instinctive, and it was a circle of them all around me, just instinctively, smoothly, naturally, swooped right in, prevented me from falling back to back to the activity. That's healthy socialness. That's what we need a lot more of in this world right now. And I need it right now because I'm now looking metaphorically at that floor called homelessness, called being genuinely broke. But I'm here for the right reasons. And so when I, if I'm gonna go down that path, if that's the hill I die on, I die on it with pride, I die on it with honor, integrity. We've got all these professional options. I've got a professional business in place, so I'm ready to go. I've, I've got all my ducks in a row. Everything is ready to go. Patreon, if you wanna for some reason get even closer to this through social networking where you can take your credibility to the communities that you have already established and say, you know, check this video out, or share some space mixes if you like them. Do that kind of stuff, please, because that really, really helps. The word that I'm going to end this video on is the word believe. We need to succeed, and we need to succeed now. And that doesn't take a lot from you. It really doesn't. Just social, help me with the social reach, provide any kind of financial support that you can. Little, any amount is great. And those of you who know me for decades, you know I'm telling the truth. And anybody who's got a good bullshit meter, you all know I'm telling the truth. All really with one word firmly in mind while we head towards responsible success. One word, believe. 